Hello class, today we're going to look at counter-controlled loops using the Visual Basic programming language inside of Visual Studio. Counter-controlled loops are also called definite loops and they get their name from the fact that the loop is going to iterate or run a given number of times. So the program I have up right now is one that you'll find in your slides for this week. It is a very small program that outputs the word hello four times inside of a loop. So each time it goes through the loop, it outputs hello. And then once it completes those four iterations, it outputs the word goodbye. So here we see that output of four hellos followed by goodbye. So let's take a look. When you use counter-controlled repetition, you will always have a variable, whether you call it count, as we're doing so here, counter. Some programmers pre prefer to use variable names i for iterator, j and k. It doesn't really matter what you name that variable, but you need to have a variable of a integer type or one of the related integer types often offered by Visual Basic that is used to control the loop. So as you can see, when the program begins, we create a variable called count and initialize that value to zero on line five here. Then we start with a loop. So just a reminder in Visual Basic, what does that look like? It starts with the keyword do while followed by a Boolean expression that is going to yield either a true or false. And as long as that value that expression count less than four is true, we will go into the loop, execute the loop. The closer down here, um, instead of end do while, it's a bit of a gotcha in Visual Basic, it's the keyword loop. Um, once it hits this word loop, it will jump back up to do while count less than four, um, making the next test, testing that next value of count against four. And it continues in that pattern. Once count is no longer less than four, the loop will exit and it will jump down here to output goodbye. So as you can see, we start count at zero. We go up through, but not including four, meaning that count will start at zero the first time through. We'll output the word hello. And then here, this line is incrementing, in other words, adding one to the value of count. So the first time through, since count is zero, that adds one to zero and updates count's value to one. So the next time through the loop, count becomes one, then two, then three. On the third, when count is three, count gets to this line, it's finally updated to four. We loop back around for one final test, count is no longer less than four, so therefore we exit the loop. Um, just a couple things about this. Um, as I said, count is the counter-controlled variable. It could be named anything we want. Um, also, just a little reminder, another way to write this would be count plus equals to one. Um, there are special assignment operators for every operator. When you want to add one to the variable and store it back in that same variable, you can use this shorthand. And that's in the context of a loop or, or outside of a loop. That's just something that you can do. Another thing that we can do is we can change the start and end values of our um, counter-controlled variable. I could instead say I want to start count at 1 and continue until count is less than 5. If I would run this, I would get the same output because given the start and end values, the loop would still iterate four times. Another way to do this would be less than or equal to four. If you get a piece of paper out and you just kind of walk through this, you can see count will iterate while it's one, two, three, and four. It'll go one more time through, achieving the same goal as the original program. So it's important to realize that those values, the start value and your um, loop condition, they go hand in hand you just want to make sure that you set it up to iterate the number of times that you want it to run. Now this particular program doesn't take any user input. However, I could modify this program and add a name variable. And I could ask the user 
for their name. Now you can use read line, um, you can use input box for this, whichever you prefer. Now this modified version of the program will each time it loops through ask the user for their name and then instead of just saying hello put a little space there so it spaces things out um, I'm going to say hello and then echo back to the user their name so let's try this out so it says what is your name I can enter my name here and it says hello and then the given name and you can keep going through like this and enter in any names that you want. Notice it iterated four times and then output the word goodbye. So I show you this so that you can see you can build a loop, a counter controlled loop that also takes user input as we did here. Switching over to a different example, this example, I'm going to go ahead and execute so you can see what it does, outputs all even numbers from 0 through and including the number 10. So it outputs 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So let's see how we did that. So again, this is a counter controlled loop. We have a count variable. We started it at 0. Why? We're going to use that count variable not only to control our loop, but as our output. Because what we want to see in our output is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So if we can use that count variable to start at 0 and each time through the loop increment by 2, then we can also use it as the output that the user sees. So here we're starting it at 0 and we're using a do while that says, do while count is less than 11. That will ensure that we're ending up um, before 11, which in this case would be 10. And inside the loop, we're going to output count. So the first time through, count is 0, so the user will see 0. The next step illustrates for us that we don't always have to increment count by 1. In this case, we wanted it to grow by 2 with each iteration of the loop. So we added 2 to count and update count. That will bring count from 0 to 2. We'll hit the keyword loop and jump back up. 2 is still less than 11, so it outputs 2. 2 becomes 4 in this statement, and we'll continue on through 4, 6, 8, 10. Once we output 10 and we get to this line, 10 becomes 12. We jump back up. 12 is no longer less than 11, so we'll end the loop. So again, like the last example, there were you know multiple ways to approach this. We're going to see that uh, there's also a for loop that we could use to do this. Um, but that is the basics of outputting all the even numbers from 0 to 10. Now to switch up the example a bit, if I wanted to start at 10 and go down to 0, displaying only even numbers, I could start count at 10 and switch my condition. This part's very, very important. I'm going to continue as long as count is greater than or equal to zero. I could uh, also change that around a bit um, to say, you know, greater than negative one or greater than negative two, but I'm going to use this operator. It's a little more intuitive for me to say, start at 10 and go through zero. To ensure that this loop eventually ends, though, I have to also change my statement that updates count. Each time through the loop, I want to subtract 2 from count, ensuring that I go from 10 to 8 to 6 all the way down through 0. So if I run this program, you can see um, the modification and how we are starting at 10 and going down through 0. Just a quick note about the do while. Um, it is a form of a while loop. In other programming languages, a lot of times they don't have a do while, they use a while. There is a while in Visual Basic as well that looks like so. You would start it with the keyword while and end while.
In terms of how this performs, it works exactly the same way. You may encounter one or the other variety, so I just wanted to show you that this exists.